Welcome to Terror Tunnel. You've heard of cops abusing their power, right? But what happens when they cross paths with an undercover FBI agent? Here's a surprising case involving a former FBI agent who's now a US Air Force specialist. He got pulled over for something as small as having a license plate that was a bit hard to see. But as soon as the cops found out who he really was, they seemed determined to find any excuse to put him in handcuffs. How you doing, sir? Good. All right. What's up? Deputy Turner with the Sheriff's Office. The reason okay. I'm stopping you is your it, your plate's obstructed. Yeah. Whatever that thing's got, you got to take it off, okay? Okay. Because you got to be visible within a certain distance. All right. When you went to driving school and a cop yeah. pulls you over, what they tell you? Oh, you pull over when it's safe to do No, you pull over immediately, okay? Let me tell you this. That, and, and, now, you pull over immediately. Sure. Um, because I don't know what you're doing inside this car. Sure, yeah. Hiding guns, you know what I mean? Officer yeah. safety is number one. From the get-go, it's pretty clear that this cop is in the wrong and might be dealing with a bit of a superiority complex. Just so you know, it's not always necessary to pull over immediately for various reasons, like not obstructing traffic and ensuring safety. But the deal is, you should aim to pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. If safety is the top priority, slamming on the brakes and swerving to the side of the road, especially without a proper shoulder, might not be the smartest move. And this isn't the only issue with the cops' actions. There's more to the story. Who are you? Oh, I'm I guess I could... enough, yeah. Former NDOC and I used to work security at Harris. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm a contractor. Okay. Uh, do you have insurance on this thing? My partner, huh? Do you have insurance on this thing? Yeah. Your partner or what? Now my partner called me, I'm a contractor with Southwest Gas. Mm -hmm. So I gotta go over there and, and get him logged into his computer. No guns inside the car? Nah, no fun. Okay. After a series of routine questions, the cop starts digging deeper, looking for ways to incriminate him. Right there up front. Hey, that's a sign. I'm a, I contract, I do contract security. You contract so, security? So some of the work that requires to have a sign. Turn it on? Sure. It's got wheel wags in the back too. Go ahead and step out, man. No weapons on anything like that? Nah. Alright, I'm gonna take you out like this just to check. Okay, yeah. go first that one for me. So you're not a uh, like law enforcement, right? You're not a law enforcement officer? Yeah. Okay, so you said you work security, yeah. right? Okay. I'm a I'm a security contractor. Copy. Whose car is it? Who? So I'm gonna put these on for now, okay? Because uh wouldn't relax? Now the agent finds himself in handcuffs, completely baffled about why he's being detained. He can only assume it's because of the lights, but the cops haven't bothered to provide a clear reason for his detention. However, things take a bizarre twist when the officers discover exactly who he's working for. Without exactly who he's working for, things take a very strange turn. Why haven't you taken the lights off of there? No, I do contract work, so I have to have lights on this vehicle for some of the work. They shouldn't be that color though. Yeah, they shouldn't be red and white, brother. Yeah, it depends on who you're contracting with. If you contract with law enforcement agencies, it's different. Which agencies do you contract with? The various ones. DOJ. Name some. A DOJ? Sure. So you have DHS? contracts? I've worked for DHS, yeah. Okay, so do you have a government ID? I have a contractor ID. Where's that? To my uh it's my hood. Where'd you get this? That's issue two. Issue two? Federal Bureau of Investigation badge? Let me I'm gonna with the officers now fully aware of his identity, you think that would be the end of it. But that doesn't stop them from seriously overstepping their bounds by searching the agent without his consent. Right? Yeah. Inside the car? Yeah. Okay. Who? Because, like I said, man, too. Put the money in. Okay. Put that back in until so I put it in the bag, okay? So the reason you're in cuffs, okay? Unless you're a sworn officer. I know what Nevada does. Yeah, you're not allowed to have red and blues, sure. right? Because then you sure. could easily impersonate I'm red. a police officer. Sure. You know? So who issued this to you? My former employer. Your former employer? Yeah. So you used to work for the FBI at I'm, one point? I've contracted with the Department of Justice and the FBI and other... Here in... Reno. Here in Reno? Where's their office at or what? Uh, resident agency. It's um, off of... Uh, it's next to Wells Fargo. It's right by the traffic circle. Okay. Uh, I'm just... <laughs> 
It's pretty clear that these officers aren't pleased that the agent has answers for all their questions. So they resort to a manipulative and corrupt tactic by asking questions they know he can answer in an attempt to incriminate him. Since you got the badge, where's your creds at? Where's your federal creds at? I don't need federal creds because I'm not currently employed by the federal government. You have an FBI badge? Sure, yeah. Okay, I used to be a task force officer okay. with the FBI. Okay, which task force? Safe Street? Yeah. Okay. So you know Elkington? No. Okay. So when did you work for him? I might answer that. Okay. Well, I'm texting somebody right now. Okay. If you impersonate a federal officer, you know you're going to get in trouble for that. Okay. And like I said, with the red and blues, that alone right there, okay? Sure. That's what you're in. That, that, but that's not, that's not an offense in and of itself to have red and blue Yes, lights. it is. And I'm going to show you the you NRS. Actually run, you have to actually run those lights. No, lights. you don't. They're in your vehicle, and I must destroy those. Okay, I'm gonna pull up the NRS for you. I went to a okay. police officer academy. I know what the NRS. Well, you might again, but I went. Have they the updated room. the NRS? Have let me they? Show you. Have they? Okay. So let me. Let's go over here. That wouldn't get a. Let me get a bag. So that was issued to you, you say, right? That little FBI deal. You know, you didn't steal it or find it yeah. or no. Keep in mind that the initial issue here revolves around the lights on the agent's car. The cops, however, lack the authority to search the agent in this situation. Their actions of rummaging through his pockets are not only unwarranted but also illegal. The details in this situation might be a bit hazy. It's generally illegal for a civilian to have red and blue emergency lights on their vehicle. But in this instance, the agent never activated them. When he did use such lights, it was while working under contract with an official law enforcement agency. Additionally, he never presented himself as an FBI agent full time, so he wasn't impersonating an agent. The cops didn't detain him for actually committing a crime, they detained him because they believed he might commit a crime. This is somewhat similar to arresting a licensed gun holder simply because they could potentially use the weapon for criminal purposes. On the other hand, this next case is much more straightforward and highlights the sometimes hilarious power trips that the cops can find themselves on. I hope I don't see you getting your f***ing ass on the street because I'm going to drive the f*** by and you can tell your goddamn supervisors and everybody else. Else. Back on July 16th, 2022, the Muskie County Jail was dealing with a major overcrowding problem. Many officers had to wait outside the facility to book their suspects. This situation arose due to a crime suppression procedure in place in the city, leading to a substantial influx of suspects. But as the jails grew more overcrowded, the county sheriff decided to call off the procedure. However, this decision was ignored by the police in Muskegee. Consequently, cops in the area were instructed to process prisoners in a specific order based on who apprehended them. Local deputies came first, followed by state patrol officers and then the Columbus police officers. As you might expect, not all cops were thrilled about this arrangement. When one deputy rightfully attempted to cut in line, tensions started to rise. Ain't that right? Nah, you go in there before us, I'm gonna raise hell. Watch this. I'm gonna file a complaint, a legitimate complaint. Am I that is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen in my life. So wait a minute. Oh, don't yell it. Don't start yelling. Hey, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm gonna file a complaint. Keep in mind, it's entirely within the rights of this officer to cut in front as he's following the county sheriff's directives. However, whether it's driven by ego, a power complex, or just plain frustration, the other cops are clearly not happy about it. I mean, this is beyond my control. I don't have any control, so don't yell at me. All right. All right. As soon as that last one gets cleared, I'm going to bring in five. Hey, yeah, unless another SO unit shows up. This is not my decision. Deputy Blaine Atkins wraps up booking his suspect, but upon returning to his car, he finds out that it's been blocked in by Columbus patrol vehicles. This is the point at which tensions escalate and things take a more aggressive turn between the cops. Them, them goddamn supervisors can I understand. Them. I get, I so get that. I get that. So I can get the out of the way. All right, so, so I got a call to go to. I can't go to the car because y'all want to play stupid ass childish game. It ain't not. No, it ain't because of me, man. I got nothing to do with that. So I got nothing to do with that in there. It ain't my goddamn call. I understand that. Guy that works over there. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Move the goddamn car, or I'm gonna move myself. Go move it. How you gonna move it? Move it. Move the goddamn car, man. Move the car. Why? Huh? In the park. Y'all acting like a bunch of goddamn kids, man. Back it up so we don't have to bring in that. 
Listen, man, I'm only doing what my supervisor told me. I understand, like, this is ridiculous, and I, and I hate that I'm dealing with this shit. But you're gonna have to talk to the sergeant over there. No, I'll be talking to the chief. Hey, chief, I'm sorry. We got a situation over here. We got CPD won't let our guys out. And they're about to give go to blows. I'm asking your CPD officer to back Word. up his car. And this is, he's saying that his supervisor told him not to. Now, what's interesting about this interaction is that the officer makes it clear to the lieutenant that he's just following his supervisor's instructions. This isn't a mere misunderstanding between individuals. It's a full-blown clash between two entire police departments. Meanwhile, in the midst of this dispute, there are citizens in danger who are left without assistance due to this disagreement. Now most of us are kind of at a standstill. Do I have anybody on Forest Road reference to 7511? Hey, sorry. Uh, we're all standing on the wall of the jail. Who car is here? Hey, move your car, bro. Fantastic. I try to get through, and they immediately halfway open it and shut it on me, and I hear through the, there's a deputy sentence behind the radio. That female officer is trying to get get into the door. Do not let her in that door. Do not let any officer through that door. From PD. From from the jailer. The jailer is just saying that through their radio. So they won't even let us through the door. Tensions are at an all-time high between the cops, with sergeants even having to split cops up to avoid fights. I don't want to fight. Everybody in. Everybody in. So what do the cops do when they feel threatened? They bring out the handcuffs. It's pretty bad, dude. Because it's this really. That deputy was about. He was saying, "I'm about to arrest you for obstruction." Yeah. To me. Yeah. This guy's got a call, but then my sergeant's telling me not to move. Right. I have this. And then when I started back, and uh, he told me to stop again. Too. What about arresting all of them for not doing their job? Right. I really wish it's not my car right there, dude. I'm gonna leave the keys in there, dude. I, I really not wanting to to be a part of a, to get charged with crime, dude, for a stand, dude. I'm telling you right now. It took more than an hour and the arrival of the Columbus police captain to calm down the situation. Ultimately, all the suspects held by Columbus officers were released with a court summons even if they were facing felony charges. If you were a fan of thrilling and eerie content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we can keep you updated on all the latest in the world of horror, creepy crime stories and much more. See you in the next video.